I do. Um, I walked into a room with as much people as, as all of you. And it was the book launch of my book, and I thought that nobody was really going to come. It was a really stormy April. This is the anniversary of the book. At Concordia St. Paul, so a so, uh, university setting. And I walk into a room thinking that maybe my mom and dad, of course, and the publisher and a few people. But I walked into a room that was as diverse as all of you. And, and the men and women who taught me looked like the men and women who are in this room. And they said, they were sitting there, and they were just crying, you know? And then there were a lot of Somalis, refugees, because they said that that's also our story. And then there were all these young Hmong people looking to see who this Hmong writer was. And I got up, and I tried to speak, and my face grew really, really red, and my voice squeaked. And I came back, and I sat down again, and I got up again to try. And my father, when we first came to America, three years after we came, my older sister, Dao, won the Northland Elementary School Spelling Bee. And so she got a $50 gift certificate, and, and she, the teacher said, what do you want to do with it? And she says, I want to buy my, our father a pair of shoes, because he got his from a church basement, so it was too big, and when my father walked, it squeaked. And so they'll use her $50 to buy my father a pair of shoes, and I promised myself that one day I was going to buy him something, too. When I was at Columbia, I, had, I was on a full ride. Um, and one, one semester, I had $300 left. And so I went to Brooks, and Brooks Brothers, and I bought him a jacket, the most expensive jacket that my father has. And he had on this jacket, because he's a machinist. He has no opportunities to wear this jacket, but he had on this jacket. And he got up to me, and my father held my hand, and he said, from hardness, you can give birth to gentleness. And he says, you have to speak, man, I... And my father said the words. He said, if Hmong tears can reincarnate, it would rain the world in our sorrow. But because they cannot, they can only green the mountains of Pumbia. But if you speak, our lives are not lost. He said the winds of humanity will blow. And I, and I, I didn't know what they looked like. So I, I asked my father if they looked like that scene in Pocahontas. Or was she seeing colors of the wind? And he says, oh, you have so much to learn. And in the three years since that moment, I've been speaking. And I know what the winds of humanity look like. They are in this room right here, right now. This is it. Flowing strong and fierce. We can only inspire if we're open to inspiration. We hear all the time the single biggest influence on one human life is another. That is what I do when I speak. I look to influence. I look to inspire. And my standard is high for myself. If I bored you, you tell me, and I will change the course of the, the course of the conversation. So many times, young people go to speech, speeches, lectures, and they walk out feeling like they got nothing. And the truth is because nobody can be the engine of the learning that we must do. At some point in time, we must take responsibility. We must ask what we want to know. And so that's why I spend so much of my time answering questions, not because I have answers, but because I want to think about the things that matter. And that is the reason why I speak, to give you all something to think about, so that we can create a memory, so that many years from now we can look back and know that we saw what it was like for one human being to open her heart, waiting for hands to hold it up. <laughs>